So we are very glad to have this professor here. And he looks professorial. <laughs> and so welcome to the Bronco's Presbyterian so uh, today what I'm going to do is a broad introduction to Islam. Next week we'll talk about what's going on in the modern world of Islam, especially the uh, ex Islamic extremism, how to understand that, how to place that within a larger context of Islam. So, um, so I won't do much of that today. Uh, the foundations of the Islamic tradition uh, really need to uh, start with some basic vocabulary. Um, Arabic, like Hebrew, is based on words on three consonants, and every word is formed from those three consonants. A little parallel is um, the word sing. We take those three consonants, it's an accidental, and we make different words from it, sing, sang, sung, singer, um, and, and so on. In Islam and in Hebrew, you have the letters, three consonants, S, L, M, from which you make the word salam, which means peace. You make the word Islam which means to submit to God. If you submit to God, that brings you peace of the heart. Uh, the basic root meaning is safety. So you are safe if you are in relationship with God. Uh, a person who practices um, Islam is a Muslim. In Hebrew and Arabic, if you add an M at the beginning, it makes it into a participle, a different form, a practitioner. So we add ER at the end, so uh, you have a song, and the person who sings the song is a singer. Uh, and for a person who practices Islam is a Muslim. So um, the, there is a tendency to put a Z in there instead of an S. I have no idea where that came from. It's a completely different word if you do that. Uh, the people who practice Islam are not Islams. They are Muslims. So just to get some vocabulary uh, straight. It started in Arabia in a uh, small city named Mecca, uh, circled there. And it was a trading city and a pilgrimage city. So there was already established tradition of people making pilgrimage from all over Arabia to Mecca at a certain time of the year. And it was on the trade route between Yemen in the south, uh, which was a flourishing kingdom, and Mesopotamia to the north. Uh, the beginning of Islam happened in 610 AD. Uh, in 610, a man named Muhammad, the young merchant, um, uh, orphaned as a child, uh, raised by his uncle. He was a member of the majority predominant tribe, but a minor clan of that tribe. And he was out on a mountain, and he had a dramatic experience in which he felt uh, a force which he understood later to be an angel, pressing down on his chest and saying these words, recite. Uh, and first he said, is, the angel said, angel Gabriel said, recite, and he said, I can't recite. Uh, or what shall I recite? Could be translated both ways. Um, and then repeated that, and finally the angel said, uh, recite the name of your Lord and cherisher who created created you from a clot. Uh, and, uh, and these words, which established some of the foundations of Islam. Uh, so he, we are created by this, this God, this Lord. The name is Allah. Allah is just Arabic for God. Christians Arabic-speaking Christians use the term, use the name Allah for God. That's what 
that's just God in Arabic. Uh, so they use the same terminology as Muslims do. And uh, so he had this experience and he didn't know how to understand it. He went down to, back to his wife, Khadija, uh, and uh, she called in a uh, cousin, Wadaka, who was a Christian. And Wadaka heard what, uh, what Muhammad described, and he said, this is a visitation from God. You better uh, listen. In a way, it's very similar to the um, uh, uh, story of Samuel in the, uh, in the Old Testament, where Samuel is sleeping in the temple and visited by God, and he doesn't know how to understand what's happening. Over the next period of the next 22 to 23 years, revelations kept coming to Muhammad, and he was commissioned to preach what he had been hearing. The collection of those revelations is uh, the Quran. So the Quran, this book, is the uh, the collection of the revelations that Muhammad received over that period of time. So Muhammad was born in about 570. Uh, the re first revelation happened in uh, 610 for in Mecca. For the next 12 years, he preached in Mecca uh, based on these continuing revelations that he had. Uh, his preaching was not popular. He gained a small number of followings, but especially after his uncle, Abu Talib, died, uh, the uncle who raised him, uh, and he lost his protection because Abu Talib was a very senior, important person. Uh, he came under increasing pleasure, uh, pressure until the point where he had to flee uh, for his life. Uh, and in 622, he left, uh, escaped Mecca, uh, was actually chased by other members of the Quraysh tribe, uh, and he reached uh, Medina, where he had been invited to come and essentially be the governor. Medina was a uh, an oasis city. It had uh, <coughs> Jewish and pagan uh, residents in this small community of immigrants from Mecca. Um, and he, they were having problems <coughs> with the Jews and the pagan tribes, uh, not just with each other, but among themselves. And so they invited Muhammad to be the arbitrator, the mediator, the governor. And that's when Islam took a change from being a, a small theologically oriented movement to becoming a, um, having a political dimension. Because Muhammad had the role not only of a religious leader, but also as a, a ruler, a governor, a political leader, responsible not just for the religious or spiritual life, but also for the political life for the protection of the community, for um, uh, conducting uh, warfare and treaties with other tribes. And what developed over that period of time was he developed a network of treaties with tribes in the, in the region. And this later really developed into what you might call a, a Pax Islamica. Um, a uh, peace governed by Islam as a network of treaties among tribes, which were used to warring with each other. But in the Islamic tradition, the idea of a treaty or a covenant is tremendously important. And so that became the mechanism for developing relationships. Um, he, they, there were battles, continued battles with the Quraysh, the uh, first big one was the Battle of Badr, which, uh, in which the, the Muslims from Medina uh, won against overwhelming odds. Uh, there were a couple other battles uh, after that, and lots of skirmishes, until finally Muhammad was able to return to Mecca, enter into it peacefully, and establish the ritual of the pilgrimage, 
which is one of the main rituals of Islam, the pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, and he did that finally on, in 632, and then he died fairly suddenly uh, in that same year, in 632. The, the record of his revelations is this book, uh, the, the Quran. Uh, I want to talk a little, fair amount about that, uh, just a little uh, detail about it. It has this chapter divided into 114 surahs, uh, like chapters, except unlike chapters, they don't go in a sequence. In a sense, it's like the book of Psalms in that there are 114 distinct revelations, discourses, which are in no particular order. They're actually kind of in an order of length. Uh, so the, the first surah, Fatiha, which means the opening, uh, is seven verses long. But then the second one, uh, Bakara, which means the cow, it's called that because it mentions a cow. So, uh, <laughs> And the, the title is really insignificant. Uh, it's just a way of designating it. And it's 287 verses. And then they go in decreasing length until at the very end you have a lot of surahs that are three, four, and five verses long. Uh, it's uh, divided up so that one can read or recite it. Uh, during the month of Ramadan, 30 days in 30 equal parts. And obviously, early on, some of those sections end in the middle of a, uh, a surah. Uh, the second surah begins in this way, which says a lot about how Muslims understand the Quran and, um, and their faith. So it says, uh, this is the book, uh, referring, this is the scripture. Uh, it's sure guidance. And then it refers to a number of essential beliefs. What is one required to believe? Uh, you need to believe in God. You need to believe in the oneness of God. There's only one God. Uh, you need to believe in the unseen world, the world of the angels and the spirits. You need to believe in. Uh, you need to believe in the uh, the world to come, the day of resurrection. Uh, you need to believe not only in this revelation, but the revelations that came before. So Muslims are required to believe that there was a previous revelation, the gospel. Um, Jesus is a prophet in Islam, mentioned in the Quran a fair amount. Um, need to believe in the Torah, which was given to uh, Moses. Uh, Moses is a very important figure in Islam, as is Abraham. And um, you need to pray. So uh, these are fundamental beliefs in Islam. I think I mentioned uh, sometime. Uh, last time and time before, that Judaism is a religion of practice. You're not a believing Jew, you're a practicing Jew. To be a Jew, you undertake a certain practice following the laws of God, the commandments of God, the mitzvah. Uh, for Christians, we are believing. We focus on belief. So you are a believing Christian. We don't really talk about whether you're a practicing Christian or not. Uh, but the, the issue is whether you believe. And Islam is in between. There certainly is a lot of emphasis on, on practice, but there is also an emphasis on belief, the things that you have to believe. Uh, yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you, you're saying that the God that worships is our God, there's only one God, and that's a little bit more right. controversial. Yeah. So, the one that Allah is the same God we worship. Right. So, okay, the question is, and this will take the rest of the class. <laughs> uh, do we worship the same God? And it's a really interesting and difficult question. Um, uh, there's a whole issue as a professor at Wheaton College 
uh, that uh, was dismissed and then not dismissed, but is leaving about because she claimed that Muslims and Christians worship the same God, and she was quoting the Pope there. Uh, but it's a, it's a really interesting question. Uh, just one minute on that. Uh, Muslims do not believe in the Trinity. They do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, and so we can easily say, on those grounds, they worship a different God. The trouble with that is, Jews don't believe in the Trinity. Jews don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. And we surely cannot say that they believe in a different God. So that runs into a problem there. We are, but it's a problem of scripture and a problem of theology. So theologically, we could say there's a problem there whether Jews worship the same God. Scripturally, however, it's clear that we worship the same God because the Old Testament is part of our tradition. Uh, for Muslims, Jews and Christians are people of the book. They're mentioned, it is assumed, by Quranically you cannot say that